What's up, everybody? Everybody, uh, Disco Demonic Hydrophonic. Thank you for joining me this day, evening, whatever it is for you. Um, so last night, I started working with Lilith. I've never, I've done little rituals here and there with Lilith, but I've never actually like done a whole, like where I'm starting. I started last night where I went to work with Lilith for a little while, uh, possibly exclusively in order to get, you know, to, uh, to build a relationship with her. Uh, the reason I haven't done this is because uh, when I was, um, I've seen it a lot online, I don't know how, you know, I've, I was always put off, not necessarily put off, but like always kind of not wanting to work with Lilith because I feel that it's always been perpetuated that Lilith doesn't like men. Uh, for like whatever reasons. Now you can go into the psychology of like people who are perpetuating this, why they're perpetuating this. Maybe it's their personal bias against men as opposed to actually Lilith hating men. Uh, I think maybe Lilith just hates like toxic masculinity, you know, that kind of thing. And I can dig that. I can understand that. You know, who fucking does? You know, so, uh, but yeah, so I haven't worked with her because, and I would actually have visions of her when I, uh, early in my walk, I would, um, I would see visions of her depictions that I saw later and I was like oh shit that's what I saw in my vision and it was like her of holding like the circular thing with the two things sticking out as uh, when she's standing on on top of the two I forgot two different creatures and then I've, I, I would see her like feet as like I would see a female with like feet that were claws like like uh, bird claws and stuff and I would ask people about them and they, and they would say oh that's Lilith uh, but again I was always you know not like afraid, but in a way like if you don't want to work with me, I'm not gonna try to work with you, kind of a thing, right? It would just it wouldn't be beneficial for either one of us. So um, after learning more more about Lilith and talking to other people, and uh, I've learned that you know she does not hate men. So I started working with her. So this is what happened. Uh, I started out normally like I do. I uh, engage my energy centers, all that kind of stuff, you know. Then I actually started feeling what I did feel during the ritual was like a tingling sensation, like different places of my body, mainly in my crown chakra. Uh, that's something I kind of been feeling a lot more lately, even just through my uh, my normal um, uh, meditative practices. Like my crown chakra has been very active lately, uh, but this kind of spread out. I was feeling it in my face, and it's just like tingly here and there. Which was, you know, that's that's pretty good. Oh, and before the ritual, I started getting a lot of visions. Like uh, I would see, I was seeing like wisps of the black smoke, wisps of like visions out of the corners of my eyes, and like very different parts of my peripheral, and then like in closer in my peripheral, like off to the side, like here, which is pretty powerful. You know, like normally I see things way over here, but I was seeing things like off to just really not that off to the side, very far at all. Anyway. So I already knew, in my mind, I was like, okay, this is going to be, this is a good connection, this is going to be a good connection, this is going to be a good ritual. Uh, so I, I uh, got everything ready. Uh, <clears throat> uh, initiated the ritual, like, the way I kind of normally do, just let myself kind of intuit what I was doing as far as my own practices, what I do. And then uh, when I tried to connect with Lilith, I got a vision of her. I didn't feel her energy right away which was, I don't know if it's because I've never worked with her before or if it's because I'm a dude. You know, I don't, I don't know what it is. But I did feel it later, and it was a motherly energy, and it was like, it was a comforting motherly energy. It wasn't super prevalent. I think it's like still the beginning of the relationship. It's still just starting out, so I think it'll grow as time, time passes. Um, but what I did see her, and when I saw her, um... I saw her as, I saw her floating in the void, and I saw her as, like, she had white skin, and she had, like, a, this diaphanous white kind of material that you could see through, it was transparent, diaphanous, uh, you could see through it, but it wasn't, like, a, a robe or anything, it, like, it, had, it was, like, cut, like, tied off, or, like, elastic or something was holding it on the ends and on the ankles, you know? And then she was like floating around. And I saw a power in her that wasn't like, I could see, I've heard her referred to as like a whore. I did not get this energy from her at all. I actually, what I saw was like uh, more of, and like in my mind, it, the, 
the way I connected with her was weird. It was different. And so it was, uh, I, I didn't see, I saw mainly a, a strong woman, co very comfortable in her sexuality, not a whore. But I could see why people who are ignorant would depict it that way. But she's not like that at all, right? She's just like very confident in her sexuality. She was very, you know, uh, alluring in, in that kind of way. So I thought she was, I thought she, I think she's rad. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was really cool. And um, her hair would change color. I saw her, her hair would be like a dark brown. And then it would go from like dark brown to red. And then like a dirty blonde. And it wouldn't be like changing constantly. It would just be like one cut time for a little while. It would be a certain color. And then, uh, and then it would change to red, and then it would stay like that for a little while, and then it would change to blonde or whatever, you know. And it wasn't like a pattern; it would just change different colors for whatever reason. Um, anyway, so <clears throat> after that, I it was you know I gave my offerings and everything, uh, closed the ritual. I meditated. Didn't really have just pretty much saw her. Uh, I didn't really have anything insane happen, uh, except for after that, I, when I went to bed, uh, this is whenever all the cool stuff started happening. So last night I had a dream, uh, kind of in the void-ish, right? It wasn't in the void, but it was kind of in the void, maybe an aspect of the void. Anyway, so I, I heard a, a word, soror, like vesper, but like I wasn't, I didn't hear it, I just like knew it, right? So it was uh, in my mind, and it was uh, it, I was like Velpar, Vespar. It could have been any one of those, right? So then I was I woke up, I woke up like three or four times. And normally when I wake up, I have to take note of whatever it is I, I hear or see in dreams, because if not, I'll forget it. Uh, this time it, I didn't forget it. It was like it stayed in my mind. And even when I woke up, I woke up to uh, like the first time around three, went back to sleep, woke up around five. Went to the bathroom, took my meds, came back here, uh, went back to bed again, and then um, just kind of slept for a while. And then I woke up, and it was still in my mind. Like, I, I remembered it very distinctly. So um, I went on. I went online, and I was like, well, let me look up Soror. Because uh, the reason I thought Soror, that I thought it was a person, because uh, maybe I needed to look at something on their profile or some shit, I don't know, you know, shit happens in weird ways, so I, I just looked it up on Facebook, actually, and the reason I thought it was a person was because Soror, and the, uh, I've noticed a lot of people who were, like, uh, study Thelema, uh, the OTO, use names like Soror and Frater, right, which mean brother and sister in Latin, and they take this on as magical monikers, and so, uh, I did find a Soror Ishtar, so I was like, well, maybe it was Ishtar, maybe I misunderstood, whatever, right? But uh, their profile was pretty closed, so anyways, whatever. And then uh, from there, I kind of just uh, thought to myself, okay, let me look it up on, uh, on, online, just a regular Google search. And then what, um, what I did find was, this was very interesting. So next what I found was Vespa Soror, whenever I put just the different words in, right? Which is a large wasp found in northern Thailand, northern Vietnam, parts of South China, including Hong Kong, blah, 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 blah. And this, it grows, it's a pretty large uh, uh, wasp. It grows to 26 to 35 millimeters, and the queen ranges from 39 to 46 millimeters. Now, if you don't know how big that is, the, that's around an inch and a half to like two inches, which is pretty fucking big for a wasp. I don't know if you've ever seen, this is a, reg, this is a ruler, this is one inch, it's an inch and a half. This is two inches. So this is a two-inch fucking wasp. You know, that's a big motherfucker. So uh, I thought that was interesting. Especially since uh, a few days ago, I did my working with Sorath. And uh, when I... Sorath came to me, came to me as a wasp. And I took on the uh, aspects of the wasp. And then that, that's when I had my, my ego death. You know, like an aspect of my ego death or whatever, right? So I thought that was very fucking interesting. And then... Um, also, there is an entity uh, named Vepar. So I was like, okay, maybe there's a connection there. Vepar is, is uh, I think it's the 42nd demon of the Goetia. And uh, Vepar is depicted as a mermaid. Uh, 
either masculine or feminine. I feel that Vespar is, fe uh, Vipar is feminine. Um, whatever your depiction is, or whatever you decide is, is up to you. Uh, and the thing is, when I was doing, uh, I do my daily tarot reading, I use different cards for each point in the, de in, in the spread that I use. And I use a very, like, I'm beginning to develop my own kind of unique spread that I, I, I use, right? So, um, one of the, anyways, one of the cards that I pulled from my Orisha's deck, the tarot of the Orisha, was the Undines and Mermaids. This is what I pulled today from that, and this says the meaning. The elements represent all who, oh, these elements represent all who, having many years of experience in a certain domain or having inherited certain behavior are close to activities that alleviate physical pain, like doctors, psychotherapists, um, masseuses, masseurs, I think, yeah, among others. So I thought that was very fucking interesting, being that, like, I'm very drawn to healing and helping people as, and being... Uh, my which links to my study of Reiki. Uh, so I thought that was fucking very interesting. There's a lot of things that tied in together with her. So uh, with all of this stuff that I that had gathered, and I haven't even had my daily meditation yet. So I haven't even meditated or looked at uh, the gnosis that I had channeled from Lilith. So as I have said before, the when I channel gnosis, I don't read it right away. I just kind of just write it out so it's pure. And then the next day I'll look at it and see what happens. So I'm sure there's something in there that's going to fucking blow my mind again. I might make a video too. But after my meditation, depends on what happens. I'm not trying to put too much uh, expectation into this. Because uh, that's one of the things you want to go in with too much expectation. Uh, whenever you're going into meditations or ritual or anything like that. Just kind of go in and let things happen the way they happen. And uh, uh, that's why I don't like to prepare too much before rituals. Anyways, I'm kind of talking on my ass there. Uh, too, much, too much information. But what I was going to say, I was going to fucking say something else, man. I hope I don't forget what the fuck I was going to say. So, uh... Yeah, I did forget what I was going to say. <laughs> but yeah, man, so I thought that was, um... Oh, yeah, here it is. In conclusion, Lilith is a very complex entity with overlapping gnosis. And is tied into so many different things. that anyone who works with her can gain profound knowledge gnosis wisdom if you put your ego to one side and just listen pay attention to what she's saying to you i think uh, you can gain like the uh the surface knowledge but also there's a lot deeper there's a lot a lot of deeper knowledge in what and what she's what she she can give you uh and this is just my first experience with her like really wanting to get to know her so uh i'm excited to see what's going to happen in the future uh so far i i think she's great i think Lilith is fucking awesome man and like I said, this is just the beginning. And so uh, I can't wait to report more about her. I may become a, devo a devotee of her. I don't know. Uh, this, is a very, this has been a very, very good experience. I, I would actually even um, relate it to my experiences with Lucifer. Uh, operate semi kind of in the same kind of way uh, as far as like uh, the Gnosis, the way it kind of overlaps. You know, it all like has double meaning and shit like that. I thought that was really fucking cool. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So if you like this video, share it with your friends. If you hate it, share it with your enemies. Have a good night, day, whatever the fuck it is, wherever you're at. Later.